Kia ora tato, welcome to Māori Business Network, I'm Brett Ray Hanna. Today we're coming to you from the main deck of the Sydney Harbour Bridge during the Sydney Running Festival. Run, sweat, inspire. Today we spoke with author Henny Collins about her book, Kamate Kaura, The Spirit of Te Raupraha. Ko ngā mihi kia koe, uh, Brent, um, pai rawa ki te, ki te hea koe tēnei rā. Um, ngā mihi kia koutou o uh, Ngāti Ahi Tereiria e noho nei. Uh, ko tainu te waka, ko Ngāti Raukawa te iwi, ko Ohu te awa, ko Waiwuri te roto, ko Ngāti Kekopuri te hapu, ko Kekopuri te marae hoki. So I belong to a hapu called uh, Ngāti Kekopuri, which is part of Ngāti Raukawa, and we let our, our side of, of the story is, is a lot more clearly explained in this book than, than previous books, I believe. And in terms of some of the important events that he's associated with, you know, it's, it's, a, it's the period of history that relates to the whole transfer of power between from our rangatiratanga, our... Um, Having our, you know, our resources to ourselves, and then the coming of the Europeans and that whole um, transfer of power and resources, which led to us losing so much land and um, also diminishing our rangatiratanga and put Raupaha and Rangihata were people who saw that risk and really started to try and fight against it and resist it. But um, you know, to some degree, they lost the battle, but there was a strong spirit that survived. And um, there, you know, the evidence of that is things like the haka and how strong that is still today, and how frequently it's still performed, and, and the mana that's in that haka. It's a key part of our history. My uh, intention was for our people to feel that the story was is theirs, you know, to bring it back to our people in a way that's uplifting to us and that has cultural authenticity, but also to communicate our side of the story to the wider New Zealand population. Thank you for coming here. Thank you for sharing with us. Ngā mihi kia koe, Brent. We also spoke with Dr Des Kahotia, Fulbright scholar, anthropologist, archaeologist. We spoke to him about his views on water rights and Māori ownership. My ecological approach to archaeology is that uh, tūpuna uh, locate themselves uh, in the vicinity of uh, resources, natural resources and stuff. And, and there's sort of a, uh, um, a very strong and a clear relationship. A key part of my work is using uh, archival document or the private manuscripts as that to um, reinforce the values, to strengthen it. Here was archaeology and culture blended together. And I thought, this is me, this is, this is my archaeology. The Māori perspective about the, what I call the cultural landscape it has to be um, an opportunity to give it to be expressed whatever form so people really know about it. When they know about it, going through a resource consent process, uh, that's when all the negative stuff starts happening. In 92, um, they had the Electricity Act come in which privatised. You had all the local councils that have their own uh, hydro generation schemes. And in the 60s and 70s, they took it under um, Act of Parliament Empowering Bill, which wasn't a uh, public work act, and then to um, set up these hydro schemes. And a lot of it, the infrastructure was placed on Māori land, which was bush. So back in 92, so there was a hui called for in Wellington, uh, you know, for, for the Māori who had claims against the, um, the privatisation. And then so uh, Manu Paul there was there with uh, Ikofinua. Um, and their issue was about they own the water. I've uh, gone through a whole uh, Waitangi Tribunal claim process and understood it's asset stripping. And most of it is we just look at land, but there's a whole lot of range of resources. There's geothermal, um, oil can be part of it. We know we have ownership of it, you know, under customary tenure, customary rights. The iwi by ili basis is doing a deal, it's a settlement process, and all it is is about doing a deal with the government. You know, got our backs to the wall, and then the crown forces you. Yeah, it's not a very pleasant process because one, we don't have the resources, and like anything, we should do the job really well. We don't have the resources, 
and so people are forced to to settle what they're doing. They're following the Tainui and the Kaitahu model is going for the cash, and then missing out what I call the other cultural sides. And that's where you need the expertise. I me mahi mahana kito mahi rangatira, me to fakaro me to korero itene wa kia ora des for coming along and sharing this with us. Kia ora kia ora kia oke. Don't forget we've got New South Wales Māori Rugby League out at St Mary's on the 29th of September. We've also got the Tūtoa Wānanga out at Heathcote the 2nd to the 5th of October. Make a comment, go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Māori Network. This is Māori Business Network, I'm Brent Rehana. Until next time, noho ora mai. Ta kiri ko te ata e ki runga o